Hi class, let's talk about the principle of inclusion-exclusion. Do you remember back when we were talking about the intersection of sets? Say we have two sets, A and B. Remember that the cardinality of the union of these sets is going to be the cardinality of the individual sets added. And since the intersection will be counted twice in this case, we have to minus the cardinality of the intersection. This is our first example of the principle of inclusion-exclusion. To make this clearer, let's talk about what would happen in the case of three sets. Say we had three sets A, B, and C. If I wanted to calculate the cardinality of A union B union C, it turns out that it would be the cardinality of A plus the cardinality of B plus the cardinality of C minus the cardinalities of the pairwise intersections plus the cardinality of the intersection of all three. In general, the principle of inclusion-exclusion looks like this. Start with a collection of finite sets, and the principle of inclusion-exclusion then tells you a way of calculating the cardinality of their union. The cardinality of the union is going to be the sum of the cardinalities of the individual sets, and then minus the cardinalities of the pairwise intersections. Then you add the intersection of collections of three sets, and by now you should see a pattern. You continue including and excluding in this way until at the very end, it's either going to be plus or minus the last possible intersection, which is the intersection of all of your sets where it will be plus or minus depending on whether n is odd or even. Let's give a sense of how to prove this. And here, we're going to do this by induction. Let's start with the base case, where we have two sets. The cardinality of the union of A and B is going to be the cardinality of A union the stuff that's not in A but is in B. That should be a straightforward equality. So let's notice that these two sets are disjoint, so we can rewrite it like so. The cardinality of the set of A and the cardinality of the stuff that's in B but not in A. We're going to add A intersect B and minus A intersect B, and this should give us the same number. Then we're going to consider these two sets together. The stuff that's in B but not in A union the intersection of A and B. In the case where we only have two sets to consider, this is going to be A plus the cardinality of B minus the cardinality of A intersect B. And there's the base case. Now we're going to assume it's true for K finite sets. And then we're going to move on to the inductive step. So suppose we've got k plus 1 finite sets, a1 through a k plus 1. We want to find the cardinality of the union. And just like in the base case, I'm going to split it up into two sets. So first, it's definitely going to be the union of the first k sets, adding the stuff that's in the k plus first set that's not in the first k sets. Similar to the base case, I'm then going to add this intersection and I'm going to minus that same intersection. All right, now we're going to notice two things. Here, we've got k sets. These two sets together should give us the cardinality of a k plus one. And then this too is the union of k sets because intersection is distributive across union. All right, putting that all together, what do we have? We've got A1 union AK, cardinality of that, plus the cardinality of AK plus one, minus the cardinality of the union of these K sets. And then we're going to apply the inductive hypothesis. And hopefully you'll see the pattern here. By applying the inductive hypothesis to the first union, we get the cardinality of A1 plus the cardinality of A2 plus the cardinality all the way up to the cardinality of AK. And then we're going to minus the cardinality of the pairwise intersections. 
plus the cardinality of the triple intersections all the way down to plus or minus the intersection of the all the first k sets. Here we've got the cardinality of a k plus one. And then for these k sets, using the inductive hypothesis, I am going to write out what the union of these k sets should be. And notice there's a minus um, out front. So first we're going to minus the cardinality of these sets. And then we're going to uh, add the intersection. And you'll notice that uh, the intersection of two of these sets is going to be an intersection of a triplicate. Then all the way down to the intersection of all the sets. So it's going to be A1 intersect A k plus 1 intersect all the others, where this turns out to be the intersection of all k plus 1 sets. All right, hopefully you'll see the pattern here. Altogether, we ended up with the formula given for the principle of inclusion-exclusion. So we've shown that it holds. Let's do an application of the principle of inclusion-exclusion. In particular, we're going to try to count lists. All right, remember, one can make n to the k length k lists from the set containing the numbers from 1 to n. Here's a question. How many of those lists use all the elements in the set at least once? Using inclusion-exclusion, sometimes abbreviated PIE is the principle of inclusion-exclusion, what we need to do is consider this as a question about sets. We're going to define the set L sub i. L sub i is going to be the set of k-length lists from the set containing the numbers 1 to n that do not use i. We want our list to use all the numbers. So the number of lists that use all the numbers is going to be the total number of lists minus the lists that don't use all the numbers. Let's do this for when n is equal to 3 and k is also equal to 3. So we're working with the set 1, 2, 3. All right. The lists that use all the numbers will be the union of the sets L1, L2, and L3. By the principle of inclusion-exclusion, this is going to be the cardinality of L1 plus the cardinality of L2 plus the cardinality of L3 minus the cardinality of L1 intersect L2 minus the cardinality of L1 intersect L3 minus the cardinality of L2 intersect L3. And then we're going to add the cardinality of the intersection of all three. Now let's actually count these cardinalities. So how big is the set L1? It is the collection of lists that do not contain one. So for example, three, two, three. We have two choices for each position and three positions. So there are going to be two to the three or eight lists of this kind. Same thing for the ones that don't include two and for the ones that don't include three. All right. What about the cardinality of L1 intersect L2? These are lists of length three that do not contain one or two. Well, there are only, there's only one option, three comma three comma three, two comma two comma two in this set, and one comma one comma one in this set. So the cardinality is going to be one, one, and one. And last but not least, what is the intersection of L1, L2, and L3? That is going to be the list that do not contain one and do not contain two and do not contain three. So that's just uh, nothing. <laughs> so the cardinality is zero. This is going to be the empty set. All right, putting that all together, the number of lists of length three from the set one, two, three that contains all the numbers is going to be the total number of lists minus the number of lists that don't contain all the numbers. So eight plus eight plus eight minus three plus 
0. This is 27 minus 21, which is 6. And here they are. Let's do one more example. Let's find the number of positive integers less than some integer n that are divisible by 2, 3, or 5. We are going to use the principle of inclusion and exclusion, and so we have to carefully define sets on which we can run the principle. So first we're going to fix an n, and we're going to de uh, define a set d sub k, which is numbers less than n that are divisible by k. So the number of numbers less than n divisible by 2, 3, or 5 is going to be d2 union d3 union d5, the cardinality of that set. By the principle of inclusion-exclusion, that is going to be cardinality of d2, cardinality of d3, cardinality of d5, minus plus the cardinality of the intersection of all three. And just note this is divisible by 2, divisible by 3, the number is divisible by 5, divisible by 6, divisible by 10, divisible by 30. Let's apply this. The number of numbers less than 999 divisible by 2, 3, or 5 is going to be the count of these sets laid out by the principle of inclusion-exclusion. How many integers less than 999 are divisible by 2? It's going to be 999 divided by 2 and then using the floor function. Applying the floor function represents taking the largest whole number less than this number. So it's going to be those divisible by 2 plus those divisible by 3 plus those divisible by 5 minus plus this is going to be 499, 333, 199, 166, 99, 66, and 33. Altogether, this is equal to 733. 733 numbers less than or equal to 999 are divisible by 2, 3, or 5.